What's up, people? Welcome or welcome back to Invest with T. Claus. My name is Tevi, and this channel is dedicated to my investment journey, along with coverage on crypto, Tesla, Neo, Virgin Galactic, and ChargePoint. Come for the information and stay for the perspective. So before we get into today's topic, it is important to me to address a couple of key points regarding the conflict that broke out this week between Russia and Ukraine. Though the focus of this channel is on financial markets and how I navigate them for stocks like Virgin Galactic, the humanitarian crisis that is unfolding as a result of these events is not lost on me. I'm not here to tell you which side of the conflict you should fall on. What I will say, however, is that regardless of the reasons, the loss of life should never be celebrated. This conflict is unfortunately impacting too many people on both sides, and that's important to remember. At best, it's causing financial hardship, and at worst, it's costing people their lives. And for that, my heart goes out to the people of Ukraine and Russia. It's frankly disappointing to see so many people on social media seemingly lose sight of the fact that what led us here is a direct result of decisions past and present, which does not necessarily reflect an entire nation's stance. One can only hope that those with the power to bring this conflict to an end find their way back to dialogue and diplomacy. Now, with that said, this is a financial channel, and that's the lens that I'll be using for the rest of the discussion today. You probably look at the market response this week, and that may have left you scratching your head, so it's worth discussing. After briefly crashing, markets rallied back into positive territory. Virgin Galactic hit a new all-time low, only to pull a strong reversal, posting just over a 12% climb and close the week in the green. So for today's video, I'll share with you some of the key highlights from the earning call. So we haven't covered that yet, so we'll do that. Why I'm more bullish than ever on Virgin Galactic. Along the way, I'll share a bit of perspective on the overall market action at this point. And finally, what you can reasonably expect moving forward. As always, this isn't to be taken at financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is my personal approach for investing and the thought process behind it. I recommend watching all the way through so that you don't miss out on any pertinent information I'll be sharing. Drop the video an early like if you haven't already and hit that subscribe button. Those are two easy ways to show your support to the channel and help it grow if you appreciate the content. All right, let's get into it. So then, as always, it's important to remember that Virgin Galactic is a pre-revenue company and as such, two of the most important metrics to pay attention to here is their cash burn rate versus their cash on hand. Virgin Galactic not only lost less money than expected in Q4, with an earning per share of negative 31 cents versus the negative 34 cents that was expected, but also on a year-over-year -year comparison, they lost 81 millions in 2021 versus 104 millions the year prior. Now, this matters because it means that they are managing their capital quite a bit more efficiently, right? When you consider that they have been hiring more team members, are investing in marketing, R&D, and ultimately are ramping up to start commercial flight later this year. That, by the way, was a major highlight of the call, obtaining the confirmation that they are indeed still on track for Q4 this year. Cash and cash equivalent remain in a very strong position for them at 931 millions. Even more impressive is the fact that that number does not include the recent cash raise they did. So in reality, they have over a billion dollars available to them. At the guided 75 to 85 million cash burn rate per month, they have a nice cushion and are well funded. So to sum it up, the improved capital efficiency and forward guidance on positive outlook for capital expenditures between now and commercial start is part of the reason why the stock reacted positively post earning. Now let's talk about what has me feeling more confident than ever about Virgin Galactic future prospects. You already know about ticket sales reopening with 750 people signed up. They again reiterated the target of having 1,000 people signed up before the start of commercial flight. That's nothing new there. The first of many golden nuggets shared during the call is that they expect that with the SS Imagine coming online in early 2023, that Virgin Galactic will reach a flight capacity of three flights per month. The relevance here is that with six seats per flight and a best case scenario of 36 flights per year, you're looking at 216 people at most that can fly per year, right? That's pretty basic math. This means that Virgin Galactic isn't demand constrained, but capacity constrained. And that again is a great first world problem to have as a new business. Now, you gotta remember that every person who has signed up has put down 150K fully understanding that they may not fly for another two to three years, potentially depending on where they are on the waiting list. So that's huge. The other golden nugget they dropped, and this, in my opinion, gives you a glimpse into what sets Virgin Galactic apart from Blue Origin, their most direct competitor, it is the experience and the value proposition they are bringing to their customers. This is the first time, as far as I can remember, that they've discussed what the membership perks that come with a ticket purchase will include. The various events around the world that you'll be able to attend are cool, but the VIP access to watch each launch 
with a first row seat from the space board, that to me puts you in an elite club, right? Think about five to 10 years out when they have multiple spaceport locations around the world that paying customers will have access to. Each one of those spaceports will have a different experience and that matters. Last but not least, and this is something that unless you are listening in on the earning call, you just wouldn't know. Uh, it wasn't in any published article or even their investor presentation. Trust me, I went through all of them. They shared their internal projection for when they expect to be cash flow positive. And that is expected to happen in 2026 with the arrival of their Delta class spaceships who will be capable of completing weekly flights. The bottom line here is this, Virgin Galactic has a clear path to commercial start and they also have modeled out the path to reaching profitability something they have been reluctant to discuss since they went public. That is a shift in a leadership mindset, and it is important to take note of. Now, if you believe in the long-term prospect of the space tourism industry, as it currently stands, Virgin Galactic is truly designing the best experience package for suborbital flight, and they are, again, the only publicly traded company with an FAA commercial license. That's important to remember as an investor. Now, it's no secret that I'm bullish on the stock, so obviously I'm pretty jazzed about this whole thing. So let's bring it into the discussion how analysts who attended the call reacted. Well, expectations have been adjusted and we're now looking at 10 total ratings. That's four buys, three hold, three sell. The average price target consensus has moved up to $16.14 from $15. The forecast now has us potentially going as high as $36 and as low as $8.40. One thing you need to realize, and I know I've said this before, the one thing that market broadly dislike more than bad news is the uncertainty that sets in leading up to the potential bad news. And that's because one, it allows for speculation in the financial media to run rampant. And two, as a portfolio manager, you now have to try and plan around the various outcomes while still being accountable to deliver the promised returns paying clients expect every quarter. This means that more often times than none, they will rotate to as much safety as they can in times of high uncertainty. So going full circle, markets have been on edge in part due to the geopolitical tension that was mounting over the last few weeks, with everyone wondering whether or not Putin would actually go on the offensive. Now, as bad as it is to have conflict break out, markets now have confirmation on the direction and portfolio managers can plan accordingly to minimize the financial impact to their clients around the world. So purely from a financial point of view, a stock like Virgin Galactic is minimally impacted by this geopolitical issue. So even though it came crashing down with the rest of the market on Thursday, investors and traders alike quickly realized this important fact. And as uncomfortable as it may feel or sound, that provided a tremendous buying opportunity. With the stock hitting a new all-time low of $7.50 a share, even if we only managed a conservative upside scenario of now $36 on the high end, that is still 5x return on your investment. This line of thinking can be applied to the market more broadly speaking and is another big part of the reason why you saw the rebound that took place this week. I told you last Sunday that at sub $10, this continues to be a golden opportunity to average down and my view has not changed. Remember, this is a long-term play for me, right? So that's precisely why I added another 100 shares to my portfolio at an average cost of $7.50. So where do we go from here? In last week's video, I stepped through how I think this likely plays out for Virgin Galactic moving forward, so go watch that if you missed it. That said, the next big headwind that markets now have to contend with is the growing uncertainty as we get closer to the March 15th Fed meeting. Clarity on the geopolitical front may or may not change how the Fed moves its policies, and that in itself increases the level of uncertainty leading up to mid-March. Ultimately, if you understand what moves the companies you're invested in, it allows you to be opportunistic when others are fearful. And on that note, I'll leave it here for today. Shout out to the Nonpunks community for pulling together this fundraising NFT collection and doing what they can to bring relief to those impacted the most. The cost of every minted NFT and the proceeds from royalties on secondary sales will be donated for humanitarian aid. So that's pretty cool. Don't forget to drop this video a like if it helped you gain a new perspective and share with others who you think could benefit from it. For my newcomers, subscribe and don't forget to ring the notification bell so that you too can stay in the know. As a reminder, I post every Sunday and as time allows, I target one additional in-week video for more crypto-focused content. Thank you for watching, stay humble, hustle hard, and I'll see you in the next one.